Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Uh, today is Thursday, December 12th, 2019. Uh, so, we had, uh, it was weird last night, we had a storm roll through where it was really coming down for a while. We got maybe an inch, inch and a half of snow, and then it was just all gone. <laughs> it was stopped. Clear blue skies, or not clear blue skies, but clear skies last night. So it was pretty pretty wild, to be honest with you. So anyway, um, that was pretty interesting. So it is uh, today, it was, oh my goodness, this morning it was really cold. I mean, it was really cold this morning. Uh, single digits here at the homestead this morning. Uh, right now it's 30. So tomorrow we will be back on this project. It's supposed to be in the low 40s tomorrow. And we're not supposed to get rain until later in the afternoon. So like after 4 o'clock as they're calling for rain then. So uh, we are going to work on this tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we will see what happens, uh, what we can get done. And it should be interesting. But uh, So that is going to be our game plan. That's what we're going to be working on. So anyway, um, I want to jump right into topic here. Because I think it's an important topic and I want to hear your guys' feedback. And it's not something that's being talked about a lot. Uh, Magnetic pole shift. Is it happening? Is it really happening? And what's going to go on with that magnetic pole shift? Okay. Um, you know, the the, uh, the poles shift, they do. They, they don't stay stagnant in one place forever. Uh, they flip. And they're in the process of doing that right now, which is one of the reasons that we have all this funky weather that we have been having. Uh, it has a lot to do with the magnetic poles and the, and the pole on the earth and stuff like that. Well, when this pole shift happens, I mean, I want you guys to think about this, okay? This is something that definitely needs to be thought about. If you live on a coast, could you imagine with a major shift where like a, like you snap that rubber band, okay? That's probably the best way uh, to, to describe it. If you take a rubber band and snap a rubber band and that violence that that rubber band will have when you snap it, okay? That's what's going to happen when that thing snaps and the pole reversal happens, all right? So, uh, you know, right now they're talking that where the, uh, the North Pole is right now, uh, it will end up being, and the, the projection is that it will be in, like, Cairo, Egypt will be the new North Pole, okay? Uh, the new South Pole would be uh, down by, like, the Samoan Islands and stuff like that. Uh, in that area. So uh, if that snaps like that, what's going to happen with all that water? Uh, you're talking about a monster, monster tsunami. And what's that tsunami going to do to the coast? Where, oh yeah, the majority, what is it, is it 80% of, let's, I mean, let's just talk about the United States. That 80% of the people live within, what, 5 to 10 miles of the coast? Something like that. And so you're talking about something that would be absolutely decimating uh, to the populace. Uh, it wiped, it'll wipe a lot of people out. Uh, absolutely wipe a lot of people out. Because, you know, they would be done. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. A uh, huge tsunami comes in. Uh, what comes in will go back out. And, uh, you know, you've seen the smaller tsunamis, like the ones that hit Japan, which were not exactly small tsunamis. And look at the devastation and the death from something like that. Now, figure that on steroids, okay? Uh, that's what's going to happen in a pole shift. You're going to have a major, major shift of things, and uh, you know that would be, you know, that would be decimating to Earth itself. Any coastline all across the world, where the majority of the people are, would be gone, and. Uh, you know, you would have a realignment of things, and things would be, the whole planet would look a whole lot different after that rubber band snaps. Um, and I'm not trying to say this to scare you. Um, you know, I'm just saying this so that you are aware. Now, when something like that happens, how do you survive that? Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the uh, tunnel system that they had. I think it was over in... Um, Oh my god, I think it might have been a rack or something like that where a guy was doing something was going to expand his cellar. And he ended up finding uh, an underground thing that like housed, I think they said like over 10,000 people, maybe it was 20,000 people. 
and uh, they had, you know, they had stables under there. They had everything. Everything was underground, um, completely underground, and then had been resealed off, and people didn't even know that it was there anymore. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, that's something that, you know, you would have to be underground to survive, uh, you know, huge winds. You're talking about, you know, a couple hundred mile an hour winds, you know, two, three hundred mile an hour winds. I mean, think about when we have a good windstorm, you know, 60, 70 mile an hour winds. I mean, it's pretty bad then. But if you had two, three hundred mile an hour winds, uh, what's that going to do to the surface of the earth? Uh, you know, you're talking, like I said, a lot of, dem a lot of devastation. And uh, so to be able to survive that, you would definitely have to be underground. Absolutely have to be underground. So, and again, you would need to be at higher elevation. So the higher elevation that you would be, uh, the better off you would be able to ride out that type of a situation. So um, I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback on this. I want to hear what you guys have to think. And they're talking that, uh, you know, this will happen in our lifetime. Uh, this is something, uh, on top of all the other great, wonderful things that could possibly could happen, this is one that absolutely could happen in our lifetime. So I, I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback on that, okay? So I wanted to point something out here because I had a couple people ask about this. So these three solar panels right here, okay, these are three 100-watt solar panels that we added into the end of our rack, okay? Uh, those go directly over here to the camper. And those charge the camper batteries uh, for my uh, one of the guys in my group, Brian, and that is his camper. And so those uh, panels are what we you're using for charging up his. Because uh, you guys remember the solar panel that was sitting over here. Well, obviously we took that out of there and we put that on the rack here, so he could get peak production for his batteries in the camper. And so that's what that is for. So those three panels are not hooked up to my system. Uh, they are hooked up to uh, the camper so that that has a source of power constantly. And so it's always those batteries are good to go. Uh, you can walk in there anytime, flip those lights on, and you're good to go in that camper because you're getting that power from here. Uh, there's snow. This was snow covered uh, this morning. Obviously, it's all gone, as you see. And uh, so... That's making a huge difference this year, power production-wise. So somebody had asked me, too, uh, how our power production was this year as compared to last year. Okay, well, this is our first year having the new solar rack in here. And I can honestly tell you uh, that this has made a huge, huge difference uh, in the production of power. I have not had to use the generator as much. Uh, you know, as I have in the past. Yesterday I pulled in uh, 3.1 kilowatt hours total for the day. Um, I did not have to use a generator at all for the whole day. And I had the power on until I went to bed at 1 in the morning. So, you know, the, the power, like now, so today is overcast. Okay, so we're going to gonna go over here. We're going to take a look and see what we've brought in so far for the day. Just to get an idea to kind of show you where we're at. Now, we are obviously coming up on the winter solstice. Uh, with today being the 12th, we're nine days away from the shortest day of the year. And then the days will start to get longer again after that. But uh, having the solar rack the way it is now, uh, the snow comes off there way, way easier, which has been great. Hold on a second. We will go in here. And we will take a look and see what we've pulled in for the day so far. All right, so we've pulled in 0.9 on this side so far today and 1.3 on this side for a grand total of 2.2. Uh, it is about 2 in the afternoon. It's, I don't even think it's 2 yet, but it's almost 2. So, you know, I might pull in another couple of tents today. So I'll pull in like 2.5 2 maybe kilowatt hours on the day. And uh, you know what? For this time of year, being overcast, I can't complain with that. I really can't. So, you know, you just kind of deal with it. It's, uh, it's part of what happens here. And uh, I'm, I'm in the Northeast. We... We don't get the sunshine like if somebody was in the south. They get a lot better sunshine, obviously. So, you know, that's, uh, we deal with what we deal with. But I'm going to tell you right now, um, having the solar rack in here now, instead of having them how I had them over here before, uh, it is absolutely making a huge, huge difference. Uh, well, well worth the investment. Really, really pleased with that. You know, um, Brian and his dad came down. Um, and help with that project, and they worked their butts off for me, you know, and uh, so it was, 
I, it's very appreciated, you know, and uh, it was not cheap. I can tell you that right now, that whole thing, and it ended up being, oh, yeah, we need more of this, or, yeah, we need more of that. It was like, great. <laughs> but, you know, it's what it is, you know. You have to, uh, you know, if you're going to do it, you do it the right way, and you get it squared away. And um, So people have asked me also with the panels, uh, is there a lot of flex, you know, with the winds and stuff like that? How much does it move? Well, it actually hasn't been too bad. We've had some pretty good windstorms up here, and there is some flex to it a little bit. But because you see the trees behind here, um, that actually acts as a windbreak. And believe it or not, the trees on this side also act as a windbreak. So we still get the wind, but it's not as bad as you would think. And then plus we have everything tied in here with these bars tied into the poles to give it more support. But watch how there's not a lot of... Yeah, you see a little flex in there, but it's not its not bad. It's not like you would think. Um, so it's pretty stable. Uh, I'm pretty happy. Like I said, its uh, it's been great. Uh, you know, i got to clean the panels off a lot less than I used to. I can tell you that, which is fantastic. And, uh, so, and a lot of times it just takes care of itself. So that's helpful as well. All right, guys. Well, anyway, I want to hear your feedback on this topic. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, with the pole shift... And, uh, you know, is it going to happen? What do you think? Do you think it's going to happen? Or do you think that's just another BS thing that we have been fed? Okay. Uh, i definitely like to hear what you have to say. I believe it's 100% real. It is happening as we speak. And uh, the poles are shifting. And it's a scary thing to think about when that time comes. How ready are we for that? Okay. So, again, uh, what do you have in place? What do you, how prepared are you? So those are things to think about, okay? So anyway, I am going to jump off here for now. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope your week is going well. It's already Thursday. Time goes by so fast. Uh, please join me tomorrow uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We will do the live stream at that point, and uh, we will go from there. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Remember, we are all in this together. That's important to remember. Also remember to hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. Also remember STD, guys. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. And the only one that can stop you from reaching those goals is you. That's it. Nobody else can stop you, okay? So I hope everybody's doing great, and I will see you all later. Have a great day. Prepper Nurse 1, out for now.